Welcome to the introduction of micro theory. In micro theory, we mainly focus on individual decision making. So we will start by the consumer theory. Later, we talk about the firms. Finally, we gather the consumer and the firms, and we will go to the market and talk about the market problems. So let's begin with the individual decision making. The first you need to learn is the preference and utility. So. First, we talk about the axiom of rational choice: how human make decisions. Second, we will investigate the measure of how people get satisfied with the with some consumptions goods. Next, we talk about the trade and the substitution. It means the intrapersonal substitutions. So I forgot. So I forgive some x and I demand for more y. Then fourth, we will use the mathematical way to talk about the indifference curve analysis. Finally, I will introduce you some traditional utility functions. So let's start. Out. First is the axiom of rational choice. So the axiom of rational choice basically is talk is talking about how people make decisions, and to make this rational decision, you need to have some assumptions. Okay. First is the completeness. Completion, completeness means that given any two choices, you can always say that you can always distinguish whether A is better than B or B is better than A or A is equally so A is as good as B. Okay, they are say they are the same. So you won't say okay, you won't say I don't know. So, given two bundles, you can always rank which bundle is better, or they are the same. Okay. The second one is the transitivity. Transitivity means that okay, if you can, if you say A is better than B, and B is better than C, then A is better than C. Okay. So if finally you said that C is better than A, then you are not transitive. Transitive means that. There, there exists something that can bridge. If there exists something that can bridge two bundles, then you can do the comparisons. Finally, is the continuity. Continuity means that okay, if A is better than B, then another bundle say A tutor is also better than B, and A tutor here is just slightly. Worse than A, okay. So that means that if A is better than B, A minus a tiny piece of something is still better than B. So this is this continuity is some uh te te technical terms to make sure that you can use mathematic models to solve the problems. So some some of the economists will just treat the first two as the axioms of rational choice. If someone is complete and transitive, then That guy is rational in economics. Okay. So after talking about the axiom of the rational choice, let's go to the measure of how people make decisions. So this is the most popular measure that can help people make decisions. This is called utility. So what is the meaning of utility? Utility is actually a machine or a function that can map the qualitative bundle into quantitative variables. See, you are saying A is better than B, okay? So better is a feeling. You cannot compare the feeling, or you cannot use mathematics to compare it. So utility is a way that okay, you put the A into the function, you put the B into the function, then you can. Compare the numeric value, okay. Well, the utility, some property, a property is that this is not unique. Not unique. It means that okay. The utility of A may be five, while utility of B may be four. Okay, and another case, utility of A may be one million, while utility of B may be zero point zero one. Okay. So all these two say that A is preferred to B, only. Okay, it doesn't say that 
A is maybe 1.2 half times better than B or A is maybe 1 billion better than B okay it so utility is just a ranking bundle okay you utility is just ranking the bundle you are just saying A is better or B is B is better you are not comparing A is how much better okay so we call this ordinal utility and also here you can see that okay no matter how large is A if A is higher than B we say A is preferred to B therefore in mathematical terms we say that utility is defined only up to monotonic transformation so this statement say that okay utility is not saying the actual value but it is saying that okay we can rank up to a monotonic transformation so monotonic transformation means that okay I give you a u function you can compare a and b and assume a is better than b so if i put this u into a function of f again the order is still preserved so in this u function a is better than b and in this f function u is still better a is still better than b okay so say i give you the utility function that just depends on the value of x okay so u3 is higher than u2 then I do the monotonic transformation I put the u function into a log function okay so here we can still say that okay u3 is better than u2 okay I put the value of 3 log 3 is still, better, still higher than u2 so here we can say that we can see that okay for different utility functions as long as they are the monotonic transformation so it's, it says that okay I put the u into ff function while the first order is positive strictly increasing okay then the same bundle will always better than the other same bundle so in economics we not uh, we can put various arguments in the utility functions the most simple argument is that we put different goods consumption of goods maybe goods X and good Y to calculate the utility okay the other argument maybe we put the wealth into the utility functions or we can put Z to capture all the consumption while H to be to, to be the leisure or we can put C1 stand for present consumption and C2 for future consumptions so that means we can put everything into the utility function and to calculate the value but the assumption is that the argument has to be the economic goods okay so for economic goods it means that more of it is preferred so here x good x good y wealth consumption leisure present consumption and future consumption all are the goods higher of that is preferred half of them are preferred okay so these are the basic assumptions in the utility next we'll talk about the uh, trade and substitution okay so here we have learned what is the meaning of utility and we, we know that more of the goods are preferred so here I give you the now the x1 y1 value okay so you can determine for region okay so for the upper right they are always better so assume now this is we are in this point x1 y1 okay so for the upper upper right it is always better because there are more x and more y for the left bottom bottom left this is always worse because this area means fewer x and fewer y and for these two portion we don't know say here this is more x and fewer y and here this is more y and fewer x and we don't know whether they are 
better or worse, okay? So given two situations, say one is the original bundle, one is here, then you can compare, okay, this is better. While here, this is worse, but in these two regions, maybe better or worse, okay? So given these two regions, maybe better or worse, you can always draw some, there must be exist some line that, okay, say here, May, maybe exist some combination that, okay, these two, the this value and the new combination of x and y combination of x and y are the same okay they they bring the same satisfaction or in technical term in economic jargon they bring the same utility to the people to the persons okay and we will call this in difference curve meaning that okay all the combination in these curves bring the same utility to the consumer okay so what is the implication of the indifference curve so one implication is that the slope of the indifference curve the slope is of the indifference curve is the maximum that the consumer is willing to give up if you have increase consumption for the other goods okay say if the consumption point change from x1 y1 to here okay x2 y2 while leaving the same utility so here we can see that now the change in x from x1 to x2 versus the change in y will keep the utility constants okay so we call these properties the MRS marginal rates of substitutions and since this is some negative value we put a negative to make this become positive so we call this marginal rates of substitution to represent the slope of the indifference curve MRS in short is the maximum of y that is willing to give up if i want to have one more unit of x okay so if i give up less y say i just have to give up this amount then a higher utility can can uh, can be attained right and if you have to give up this amount of y and you can see that okay lower level of utility you are attained so only if here y2 this point you can sustain the same in utility in difference curve so that means that okay only this amount of y allows you to stay at the same utility curves that means you won't lose anything so this is the maximum you are willing, willing, willing to pay if you want to buy one more x okay so next we talk we will talk about the substitutions again the assumptions of the preference so what is the relation between the axiom transitivity with the indifference curve so if okay if one's preference is not transitive the indifference curve will be weird in the sense that okay they will cross so say you have four combination a b z and d okay so why not transitive means cross of indifference curve so here you can see that a is preferred to b while c is preferred to d right at the upper right upper right okay next you can see that b and c lies in the same indifference curves as u1 so by the transitivity i know that a is preferred to b b is equal to c c is preferred to d so a should be preferred to D, okay, if transitive transitivity exists, but here you can see you can see that okay, A and D lies in the same indifference curve U two. So here, okay, now A is similar to D. Therefore, it violates the transitivity assumptions. So if if one's preference is not transitive 
stay his or her indifference curve will cross. So last of the what last of the property is the convexity. Okay, so in the for the uh, consumptions, so we usually assume that okay, this is one extreme, this is another extremes, and this is the middle of that. So we usually assume a convex indifference curve. So this represents u zero and u1 for the middle one so it means that okay the middle one the utility level is higher so the middle one is preferred to any of the special ones okay so usually for the normal human being we usually like balancing consumptions rather than just buy just buying too much of one goods okay so this is usual humans being the basic assumption of human behavior so implication of the convexity of indifference curve say is, is saying that okay so indifference curve is convex saying that people usually balance their consumption okay say it is not convex it is concave then later you will, see, you will see that okay if the indifference curve is concave or linear they will specialize in consumptions but in reality we seldom see people specialize in consumption so we assume utility no we assume the indifference curve is convex okay 